Well, alright guys, so welcome back to Gaming Today. You might not have heard of this game, it's called Splitgate. This game is actually pretty cool and also free to play, at least on PlayStation 4, Xbox and now PC. When this game first came out back in the day, it actually cost money, now it doesn't, so that's always a good thing. This is kind of like a Halo meets Portal kind of thing. Yeah, Halo the game, you know what we're talking about here. While you won't be shooting any alien bad guys, you will be playing a game of red versus blue essentially. It might take you back to the good old days of Halo 2 Online. It's very similar and kind of feels very fresh. Everything from the look of the game as well as the guns and the way the physics are in the game will remind you of the old Halo games, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The game's physics are kind of basic, however it makes up for it with the portal gun. If you guys have ever played the Portal game series, which there are two of, you probably know what I'm talking about before Valve went all boring and steam-like, you know? The good old days of Valve. But anyways guys, this game is kind of interesting because it takes the concept of the Portal gun from Portal and also the concept of Halo Red vs Blue with the guns from Halo and brings them both together in two worlds colliding. And this sounds kind of weird, but yet is interesting. Guys, you can actually use portals to shoot at your enemies. So you don't even have to go through the portal, you just might shoot through the portal at enemies. That is totally cool. But they can do it back to you as well. You may even just use the portal as surveillance, like cameras, so you know where everyone's at at the battlefield at all times. Or you might just use the portals for transportation. Either way, whatever you decide to do with these portals, it's up to you. Your playstyle can be unlimited, depending on the map, of course. Some of the maps are very poorly made, let's just be honest with you guys. Other maps are very great, like the stadium map is my favorite. There are a lot of bad maps in this game as well as good maps. The reason for it is there's 20 maps. It's way too many maps for this kind of a game. 12 would have been the magic number, I think. Obviously, this game has a lot of problems, but it's very, very fun at the same time. And with it being free to play these days, you might want to give this a try. There's also tons of different game modes, one of which is more annoying than the rest, and that is the ball mode. Why is this annoying? The voice announcer never shuts Balls up. Balls are secured. Lost Your balls should lead. always be secure. Ball okay, too ball much about the ball. Stolen. Okay. Ball <laughs> really, the entire game I have to hear ball this, ball that. It's impossible not to make jokes. Okay, that's ball what the ball's secured. for. What do I do with it? What the hell do I do with the ball? Tie the leader. Oh, I just hold it? I just hold it and run around. Oh, wait, return to the battlefield. Ball no! Dropped. I dropped the ball, sorry guys. And it's totally annoying on your ears, like honestly just play it and mute. While the game mode of the ball mode is actually pretty fun, all you have to do is get the ball and try to hold on to as long as you can. You can't use the portals or any guns while you're basically holding the ball, but you can drop the ball and start shooting at people after that and then pick it back up if you want to. But that voice announcer makes it very brutal and kind of funny in the beginning, but it gets old fast. All the boys commence with your ball jokes. I know I did. Customization in Splitgate is very basic and kind of doesn't have any personality. However, the gameplay itself does have personality. It is very basic gameplay and the movement speed and basically your turning sensitivity is extremely low when you first play this game. You need to turn it up at least to like 11 or 13 on all axes. It's so bad, or axes, whatever you call them. Guys, it is horrible. When you first start the game, you feel like, oh my god, left to right is just not fun at all. Once you adjust that, you actually get used to the guns. It kind of feels like the old Halo, and it's actually a good time. The amount of creative things you can do with the portal gun is crazy. The way you can take out enemies left and right and maybe get a huge kill streak is insane. Right now, the top kill streak on Stadium is, I believe, 69 kills. That's a lot of kills. I only got up to, like, think, 24, 26. That's a lot. That was made possible by using those portals and coming up with a strategy that works best for them on that map. Now, certain maps in the game make it almost impossible to get a lot of kills or at least a good amount of kills because they're so big or because you fall off them all the time or they're just kind of crazy where no one knows where to go. That's kind of the problem with some of the maps in the game is that they have no direction. You kind of just spawn and everything looks the same and you don't know where to go. That's a problem with almost every single map in this game is that everything looks very similar. We didn't talk about the graphics, the art design or the sound effects or any of that stuff yet. Let's get into it. The art style is very, very plain and basic. It's again, red versus blue. That's essentially what you get. Halo red versus blue is what this game is altogether, really, with a little bit of mix of portal. It's very basic sci-fi type techie thing going on. It's nothing special, honestly. Very generic looking, and that's one of its biggest downfalls. Getting players to want to purchase things within this game is going to be kind of difficult for the studio because there's no reason to. There's no personality to any of the customizables in the game. In my playthrough, only to level 10, I actually got a lot of free customization or customizables for free by just unlocking them within the game doing challenges, which I was just doing by playing the game. And already, most of the guns I use I have skins for that I actually do like. And I also have a character skin that I want, so why would I ever pay money to this game? That's a bit of a problem. I mean, yes, it's great to reward the player, but now I have no reason to spend money in this game, and I don't think any of you guys will either. Don't spend money right when you get to this game, just play it for a while. It's actually very pricey. One of the weirdest emotes in the game is shake your booty, and it costs $4. $4 to shake my ass in a game, are you kidding me? You should be paying me to shake my ass in this game. 
Anyways, guys, so yeah, there's some weird things going on with this store and the customizables. They need to work on that a little bit. Let's talk about the sound design before we get to those graphics. Sound-wise, there's nothing special. The guns do sound okay. There's nothing great, but I will say one thing. You can hear enemy footsteps very well. Your actual, like, players on your team, if you're playing Team Deathmatch, for instance, you'll hear their footsteps sound different than the other enemy, which is always a key thing. Enemy footsteps will sound louder and a little bit faster sometimes. I don't know why. Anyways, it's very clear and very easy to hear with headphones, so you won't have any problems there. The guns are pretty basic, they sound like sci-fi guns, very similar to Halo. Maybe not as great as Halo, but they do sound okay. Nothing wrong with them. Now let's get to the fun one. Graphics. Graphics or visuals, whatever you want to call it. They are extremely basic, guys. It's like an old Xbox 360 game, maybe mid-gen or early-gen Xbox 360 type. Really is nothing spectacular to talk about with the graphics. The visuals are extremely low poly. They're very low graphic quality. Honestly, if you're a PC elitist, you're not going to like this title. It's not to say the graphics are necessarily bad. They're just way, way behind the times. We're talking like old, old times, okay? We've been a long ways from where this game has come from. It really does feel like a Halo game from back in the day. We're talking Halo 2 at best. The graphics, maybe Halo 3 will be nice, say Halo 3. The graphics are very underwhelming. And they're talking about giving fidelity upgrades to the PS5 and whatever. It's like, what can you do with it? Your art design is very low. There's nothing you're going to be able to do to change that. The characters look soft, the backgrounds look soft, everything looks soft. And even if it was super pencil sharp, right? It wouldn't make a difference because the art design by itself is very plain. Low poly and easy to make things. You in an indie studio could make this in about a day. The graphics of this game are so basic. You can actually make this run on a smartphone with little to no effort. And it does look like certain smartphone games that are out there. Obviously, it's more fun because you have a controller, but that's about the only reason. Now, currently, this game isn't available on any mobile phone or the Nintendo Switch, but they have confirmed two days ago that this game is now coming to the Nintendo Switch in the near future. Once the open beta is actually over with, or whatever they're considering a beta. They said the beta was supposed to be over in July. It's now August, late August. Almost. So guys, I don't know when this beta is going to be over. It's supposed to be over in two weeks now. Who knows? Either way, what we're talking about is a game that came out in 2019 and failed horribly on the PC because on Steam, it used to cost $25 to $30 and nobody wanted to pony up that money. And when they did pony up, they were disappointed with the graphics, the art design, and they just didn't understand why would anyone keep playing this. For $30, it was a ripoff. And they made the title free to play. Here we are now. I think it has a much higher chance of being successful as a free to play title than it ever did as a paid to play title. Because look at the way the game was designed from the ground up. It was always made a free to play title, but just like you were paying for early access. That's all it really was, and everyone called them out on it. Nobody wanted that. Gig is getting a lot of attention right now due to the con falling off because of all the hackers and stuff, and Apex Legends players getting something bored. Fortnite players getting bored of their game. No one knows what to play right now. Splitgate is the free-to-play tunnel. It's the new hot thing on the street, even though it's kind of old. And it looks ancient history compared to all those games. But, you know, it's something to play, and that's what people are doing right now. But understand me, guys. It's not a bad game by any means. It's fun. There's a lot of issues with it. I wish they would take out some maps and maybe remake them or change them all together. Just keep the 12 core great maps or whatever you can come up with. Five, six maps. I don't care how many maps there are. Just make sure those are quality maps, not garbage maps where we fall off all the goddamn time. There's nothing better than a map where you fall off every five feet you walk because you didn't know there was a hole there. That's everything you guys need to know about Splitgate. Hopefully you did enjoy the video, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's not a bad game. Try it out if you want to. It's free to play. you got nothing to lose. Just don't spend any dang money in this game. Come on now, guys. And until next time, it's been Gamer Today.